I guess we all deserve a second chance, so I'm giving Goodwill a second chance now. I know there's haters of Goodwill. I know there's haters of resellers amongst a certain young generation who doesn't really understand that people don't need the stuff, they need these other things. So I have no qualms about shopping here and helping support. I think it does something good. The illustrious bins in this place is really busy and it's mostly soft goods and it's mostly newer and that's mostly not my gig but I see that there's some pretty good deals on some things that I can use so let's see if we can find anything old. Old nut holder it would have had all the utensils it's not anything anymore. Hmm. Fish and Google shoppers we're about to do a road Oh, we're rotating stock. Okay, this will be fun. Away they go, and here comes the lineup while new stuff comes out. We're going to see what this is like. Out with the old. Let's see what they come in with instead. Off it goes to the back room, and out will come the new stuff, and then these people are going to lunge for it, and I guess I am too. And the replacement merchandise. So far, not too good. Here it comes, drum roll please, is there going to be anything vintage on these carts? If these were storage lockers being opened, I would say no thank you. All right, let's see when they announce that it's okay. I think there's going to be two more carts coming and then they will tell everyone they can last into it. People are being very well behaved. Well, cheap is cheap, but nothing I would buy. Let's see what these people think though. They think differently. They see things to buy, and I'm sure that for certain resellers or certain things people need at home, they're right. But not my gig. I don't see a single old thing. These people are about to get slammed, so I'm going to go. The changing of the bins. Oh, it's so interesting and exciting, but I didn't see anything to excite me in terms of merchandise. I'm sure Goodwill makes a lot of money and it looks like they are trying to be visible about some of the things they're doing to help the community with it. So I hope that those people's purchases go a long way to helping them and Goodwill. I'm sure a lot of those people were resellers. I'm sure they know lots of things about those things that they were picking up and why they were a good deal, especially at the prices that I'm sure they're getting them for. It's priced by the pound or whatever. But, you know, I just want to stick to my role and I do antiques and vintage and there wasn't one piece in that whole store. Shows are coming, holidays are coming. I've got a lot of online sales coming, so I need to be shopping for merchandise. This is the beginning of a buying trip. I haven't had a buying trip week for a while. I have a destination in mind and an appointment to make, but in the meantime, I get to freestyle today. And I have always been curious about this place. This is South Louisville Antique and Toy Mall. And it sounds and looks pretty different than a lot of places you've seen. Because this place is more about these sorts of antiques and vintage items. I don't know if we'll see a lot of antique toys in here, but we certainly are going to see a lot of cool vintage things. Garfield trash can, $40. You know, this is the generation collecting their childhood again. Triple X root beer, I grew up around that. $9.99. But this is also a place if you are a collector of action figures and various series pieces. Some of these are out of production in a long time. Some of them maybe less so. Some of them are retro throwbacks. Here's a bunch of wrestlers. They have got all of the sorts of things like this you might imagine collecting. They have Hot Wheels, newer and older. They have Hercules. They have Star Wars. They have Johnny Lightning. These 70s kids might have played with the Emerald City from The Wizard of Oz. I've never seen that before. Or maybe you were more Donnie and Marie fans and there is their entire stage TV show and the instructions. This is a mall. There are dealers stocking so a lot of different people have to come together to bring this much of a certain type of item. Now they do have other antiques and vintage too. This is a cute little teapot here for only $8. Lee Go Go Girls were to look like the Keen Girls with those sad eyes, but they're not quite the same. This is when Disney was trying to figure out how to reach a younger audience. This is about 1970. Pistol Pete Maravich. When you get back to the original three of Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and of course the original movie, that's where you see some bigger prices. This is by Kenner and it is priced at $150. Bunch of license plates in here too.
I mentioned recently that model railroading to me was still pretty cool because you get to have these big setups and look at this. This is being supported here by donations, but I'm sure they come in the train enthusiasts and run this and show it off for the kids. And what fun. They're mixing some die cast toys. These look like they're maybe O gauge, they're large gauge. Most kids played with smaller than this, but it is, you can see some of the smaller gauges down here. It is a really interesting, fun, extensive setup in here. The Texaco Fire Chief hats were given out in the 1950s and 60s, and when you've got the sound makers and the speakers and everything and it all works, then $95 is not a hard price to get for that. And of course, where you have train collectors, you're gonna have trains for sale. They've got some more modern ones here, the Walther's Protos are really very good. A lot of these get into big money when you start getting some of the ones that are painted on brass, for example. Atlas, this is an older HO scale locomotive there, $59 on that. And then you've got a whole bunch of trains and sets over there, including some newer ones, but also some that I see that date back into the 1960s, 70s period. And if we walk past the Hot Wheels, which start as low as $3 for some of these more recent ones, we get into some really neat older vehicles here. The electronic cannon from the 1950s, very sinister sounding, $285 next to the Bell Telephone. That's in great shape. The Tonka car carrier is $375, but I actually like this one down here, the Structo Auto Holloway with the original Cadillacs from the early 1950s. Priced at $145, an old Gulf gas station towel dispenser, and Triang, that's an English brand, the Puff Puff train up there on the top. Next to, of all things, a Colt 45 malt liquor sign. Obviously a mix of new and old because we are in a mall that's very dedicated to one type of merchandise. On the other hand, look for the thing that doesn't belong. $125 is not a bad price on the spaghetti lamp but the label around the top makes me think that that is a newer cord that they've put in it. Ooh, the 1970 Cougar Eliminator. My teacher in third grade had that, and I thought that she and that car were the hottest things on wheels. It's pretty amazing that you can make a mall with a specialty like this. I think it's just great that they have so many people who are able to find the merchandise, because there are a lot of older pieces, like this old blue Comet train set here. A lot of lead soldiers and some older chieftains and things in here. A lot of little metal buildings and the Bourbon Street drunk at the lamppost. I'm sure this is a really fun place at the holidays to shop. And I'm sure that if you have someone who's a collector of these things in your family, it'd be a great place to get some variety that you might not otherwise expect. Um, for me as a reseller, it's probably not my place to shop, but it's fun to look. On the other hand, there are some booze having big sales. This is half off. I do like the Fisher Price Play Family Camper. I don't see that very often. It's even got the original boat on the top and it's gonna be $50 with the discount. Also 50% off this case, including some derby glasses. 1982 for $3 is not a bad price. I don't know if I'd say this is very rare, but it is hard to find the polyethylene Davy Crockett train set on the original display card. $75. And then some really cool pieces from a Barbie size kitchen from about 1960. You've got the foil paper and towel dispenser and some boxes of food. And look at that yellow oven. That is pretty cool. It's not complete, but it's $100 for everything you see there. So, you know, that's not a bad price for a collector. And if you wanted to break the pieces apart, you might be able to make a little money as a reseller. Six million dollar man bionic mission vehicle. I do not really see that anywhere anymore. I've had the bionic woman once or twice, but boy, the prices have gone up. Some of these derby glasses are impossibly cheap. Two dollars a piece at half off. 50 cents for the 132nd. I need to get a few of these because it's half off, including firm in this case. They also have a lot of the old medicine bottles though, though. Unless it's a poison bottle from this era, I don't really look at them. I see a DVD under there for scrubs. 
the grandson of the treasure map founder was one of the writers on that show. Well, they had someone to help right away, which is always impressive to me. And I'm taking five of the Derby glasses, which is nice. Set of automobile glasses. These are old. These are from the early 60s. Only $10 for that whole set in the box. That's pretty good. The 74 El Camino. That was a scarcer vehicle, so that would be a scarcer promotional model as well. Pokemon cards. Well, this is a world of its own, and I can't say that I know a whole lot about it. Errors are definitely important. Certain pieces that were made in one country and not another are important. First editions are important. So there are things to know, just like any other area of collecting. So if you have somebody who grew up on Pokemon and is now really into it again, ask them about it because they will be able to tell you some of the nuances and you will find a lot of this stuff at estate sales and yard sales being sold by parents of kids who are now that age who don't realize it. Vintage foot pedal, that's a classic from when I was a little kid. The hippies all had the foot pedal in their car instead of their actual foot pedal. Flint McCulloch, that is in perfect condition from Wagon Train. Double holster is $70. Christmas is near, $50 for the 1972 Christmas tree. That's about what they're going for now. Always like this guy, the drunken St. Bernard leaning up against the barrel. That's another one of those caddies from about 1960 for the dresser with a bank in it. Well, I've got to say this place is quite extensive. There's a cool thing, a 2013, so it's contemporary but not brand new fritz 50 limited edition bike and it says it's never been ridden cool looking it definitely looks like the old sting race from when i was a kid this is a pretty good fire king mug these were done for the rio grande to be used on their passenger rail cars back in the 1950s in the peach luster the action railroad 12 dollars. my grandfather worked for them this says it's on comics. I wonder if that includes the Churchill Downs programs. Probably not, but I'm curious to look at those anyway. Nice selection of promo cars. I love it when they have the original box. The 66 Fords. Those are both priced around 80 because of the boxes. These are neat looking Chryslers in here, or they may be Imperials. Imperial was a separate division at the time. Chevrolets. Bunch of trucks. I don't see so many for trucks, so this is interesting. When I do, they're usually newer. 71, putting you first in a big way. $250. And then this is, I believe, the first Monte Carlo from 1972. And the all-new look is here, yes. They tipped this car on end and proclaimed it was the largest car ever made. 239 inches from stem to stern. A few years later, gas prices came, and that didn't seem like such a good idea after all. Now, here is a more traditional booth, and this is half off, so we are going to do some shopping in here. But I've got to go back where I was first, because the fellow is going to get the key to show me the Kentucky Derby programs. One nice thing is, like they say, we know Joe. If you are a specialist in a category like this, what a great opportunity to be in a store that really features what you understand and know, and makes it available to other people so that they can understand and know. Entire cases full of nothing but models. Austin Powers, yes. <laughs> but some older ones too as well. Dukes of Hazard lunchbox, that's right at that time when the thermoses went to plastic so you can see it's a little bit worn. Kids did not like that. This is from 1981 and you don't really see these very often especially because they were just stick-on labels. It was a recession time so they wanted to make things cheaply they were made in Aladdin's factory in Nashville, Tennessee. 125 for the set now. I've been asked a bunch of times about these. They want $25 with the discount. This is one done in 1976 as a reproduction of the original Declaration of Independence. They did them in 1926, 1976, 1876, and then the original reproductions were done by John Quincy Adams in 1826. They were on Antiques Roadshow, and then suddenly everybody who had one of these, who didn't listen to the fact that the dimensions were different, got confused. <laughs> Here's something different. This is signed by the Duchess of York when she was involved with Weight Watchers after she was no longer in the royal house. Dated 2003. Dear Jason, well done indeed. Best of wishes, Sarah the Duchess of York. That was only $15 and now it's half off. I'm intrigued. I think I'm going to take that. I think someone's going to think this is interesting besides me. A little different piece of royalty memorabilia. And then this piece here, I have been making my way over towards 
it is priced at only five dollars. I believe this is a pretty good piece of Blanco with the leaf pattern from the 1950s and at two dollars and fifty cents it's a score. This is why as a reseller I come to places that are not necessarily my places to shop because I find things that are not necessarily their things to sell. So they have a little of everything here, but not the everything you expect at most antique stores. It's different and interesting. They have this whole set for $3.75 with the baby Jesus. Goebel does not make Hummels anymore, but they make lots of other stuff. And at some point they made the Looney Tunes Spotlight collection. And now this dealer has this original case from one of the stores for $900. If you just loved Warner Brothers stuff, that would be the showcase for you. We already found a couple of fun things in this space, so we're gonna keep looking. This looks modernist, at least. It is Japanese from the early 80s, I would say. Cute, not important per se. Barber bottles are one of those old time collectibles you just don't really see very much anymore. I like the one with the pigeon blood. It's only $30. If it doesn't have any chips at $15, I would take it and try to resell it. This one seems to have a correct stopper in it. A lot of the porcelain stoppers were replaced, but that's a metal stopper. That one was priced at $140, however, and even at half price, the values are not as high as they once were. This one's a neat opalescent, but that one is missing its stopper, as is the one on the left. And the one in the back is actually not as interesting to me as the one with the birds, the Victorian one with the ruby flash. More from the Empire Strax back. These are snap action scenes, $40 each. It's neat to see the State Highway Department Structo grader on top of the big trailer. I don't see the trailer very often. Neat set from the 50s. And like a lot of metal crafters, Dunwell in New Jersey tried making toys for a little while. This is a 1955 Ford truck with the livestock transport. Scarce piece at $250. Barbie goes through a lot of convertibles. I think I got this one for my niece when she was little. If she was 10 years older, it would have been this one that looked like a VW Rabbit or something similar from the time. And up amongst all the Barbies, and they have some that are a little bit older, are Sunny and Cher. The Flintstones collector set had everything you needed for recreating bedrock. It was by Marks, and it came out Right about the time the show was at its peak in the early 60s, 125. Personally, when I see things that say classic collection, that tells me it's not classic and I don't buy it. Lots of fun board games. Of course, board games really took off in people's esteem a couple of years ago when people were inside a lot. And so there's a bunch of new collectors of old board games because of it. And wow, does this place go on and on. Another half off comic stand and some more showcases. It really is smart because when you're dealing with a lot of little things like this, it could really be distracting and hard to keep straight. But to have everything divided like this means you can show lots of little things like old Hot Wheels red lines for 20 and $30 a piece, the old advertising ashtray there with cool shape, pocket knives, fishing lures, costume jewelry, all these different sorts of little bits are nicely arranged in showcases here rather than just sort of lumped in a big open space. So it is really neat to see the theme here. I am finding some things to buy and this has turned out to be a really fun stock. Thimbledrome TD3, that is an early Cox airplane. Look how lightweight the body is. I have the Thimbledrome car on eBay for sale right now. And they have all sorts of the early motors with the wooden propellers and some of the models. This is a pretty neat display if you like this sort of thing. I see prices in the $85 range for a lot of these engines and $150 to $175 for some of the models that had the control lines. Those were tethers you held the thing while it flew around in the air before there was remote control. And yet in the same showcase, now you have an Aladdin Jadeite base lamp and this lamp that has a very pretty shade that looks like it was decorated perhaps by the Charlton Company. So you just don't know what you're going to find in a space like this. And you can pose with your best friends. I imagine that somewhere in here, anyone of any age alive today could probably find something that would spark joy or happy childhood memories in this place. Here is another case where we are looking for things that don't seem to match. And we have a dresser jar here. This one has some really, really nice gilding. 
finial is a little bit loose, but I think it's all right. And it is priced at, I think that's $8. If it's 18, I might be out, but if it's $8, I'll take that. So we'll find out. When I see 50% off coins, I have to assume they were priced really high because otherwise they would all be gone. Ah, Herbie the love bug, yes, and he would flip over and roll around. And he works, $145. Newscopter is a pretty fun thing. And then the Douglas Skyrocket. Any of these, the giant helicopter in the box, any of these Japanese wind-up toys, really very valuable now if they're in working order with the box because they really were not well made and they weren't expected to last. Fred Flintstone on Dino, another one that wasn't expected to last, 300 bucks. Well, I went to the toy store and I had a great time. This is really fun, uh, very unexpected. And what an exciting and interesting concept. Look how nice it was to have such variety and you end up getting to run this huge, wonderful toy store without having to put all the inventory in yourself. This has been a lot of fun and we're going to show you more as our buying trip ensues. If I could find Blinko for $2.50 everywhere I stopped, it'd be a great time. So let's see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.